An incredibly powerful supervolcano lies beneath the surface of Yellowstone National Park. And if it were to erupt today, it would send 2,500 times more rock and ash into the atmosphere than the 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption in Washington state. However, the supervolcano has been dormant for a long time. But in February 2023, a Russian scholar mentioned on television that Russia could possibly send a nuclear missile to the volcano to trigger a massive explosion. Yellowstone National parks in the United States bring in hundreds of millions of visitors per year, and these visitors come from all over the globe. National parks possess a beauty that's unique, and they're a safe home for a wide variety of wildlife. People love to hike in the parks and get a break from the hustle and bustle of major cities. Yellowstone National Park is mostly located in northwest Wyoming, but parts of it extend into Idaho and Montana. It was the first national park in the U.S. and was opened on March 1, 1872, during the presidency of Ulysses S. Grant. The park is made up of some 2.2 million acres. 890,308.4 hectares of land, and half of the world's active geysers can be found at Yellowstone. People also come to see the beautiful Grand Prismatic Spring and the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone. And for those who enjoy watching animals, over 60 species can be seen roaming around the park, like bald eagles, bison, bears, and elk. Glaciers carved out the valleys and rivers in Yellowstone. The earliest humans known to be in the area likely migrated into the region some 11,000 years ago, and these humans likely survived by hunting the bison and mammoth in the area. Obsidian has also been found in the park and was used to make tools for hunting animals. The indigenous Crow and Sioux people inhabited the region from the 16th century until the 18th century. The Crow named the land Apawishi, meaning land of steam. But these weren't the only people who lived here. But these weren't the only people who lived here. Incredibly, some 27 indigenous tribes have had connections to the land. The first non-indigenous explorer to see the land was John Coulter in 1807. He was part of the famous Lewis and Clark expedition. And when it became a park in 1872, Frederick Law Olmsted, a landscape architect, said that the park ensured the pursuit of happiness. In his opinion, the park upheld the values of unity, liberty, and equality. In 2021, some 4.6 million people visited Yellowstone, and July of that year set a record for the most visited month in the history of the park. One of the most popular attractions is Old Faithful, the most famous geyser at the park. For years, Old Faithful has erupted around 20 times a day. And this means that since the park opened, over one million eruptions have been recorded at Yellowstone. When it comes to the history of Yellowstone, a name to remember is Bob Christensen, a man that worked for the U.S. Geological Survey. And during the 1960s and 1970s, his fieldwork led to the discovery of the Yellowstone supervolcano. His work was then studied, and by the 1980s, scientists realized that the supervolcano was alive and there was a threat that it could erupt with catastrophic consequences. The Supervolcano The United States is by no means immune to volcanic activity. The largest in U.S. history was the Great Eruption at Novarupta in Alaska, which blew its top in 1912. Three cubic miles, 12.5 cubic kilometers, of magma erupted and the blast was heard some 750 miles, 1,207 kilometers away in Juneau, the state's capital. Ash also covered the town of Kodiak, which is located on Kodiak Island some 100 miles, 161 kilometers from the blast. The ash was so heavy that buildings collapsed due to the weight. Some even died from suffocation while the sun was blocked out by the ash. The eruption was absolutely devastating, but it could have been a worse situation had the region been more populated. Mount St. Helens in Washington state erupted on May 18, 1980, and was perhaps the most economically destructive event in the history of the country. It was also the last major eruption in the United States, which covered areas up to 17 miles, 27.4 kilometers from the site. Mount St. Helens took the lives of 57 people 
and caused an estimated $1 billion worth of damage. But Mount St. Helens was nothing compared to the Nova Rupta eruption in 1912. What happened at Nova Rupta and Mount St. Helens was terrifying, but if the massive supervolcano in Yellowstone National Park erupted, it would send the world into a mini ice age. Located in Wyoming, the supervolcano has been the topic of numerous articles, videos, and even a documentary. The reason for the supervolcano status is due to the fact that it has the capability of measuring a magnitude 8 on the Volcano Explosivity Index, VEI. Criteria for the VEI includes the volume of ejecta, or ash, pumice, and lava. It should be noted that those eruptions measuring an 8 on the VEI occurred as recently as over 10,000 years ago. It's believed that the first eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano occurred some 2.1 million years ago. That eruption is one of the largest known to scientists. And ash that was ejected from the volcano was discovered some 5,800 miles, 9,334.2 kilometers away in Missouri. Another eruption took place some 800,000 years later, resulting in the formation of calderas or large volcanic craters. After being formed some 640,000 years ago following a volcanic eruption that was nothing short of cataclysmic, the Yellowstone caldera is 30 by 45 miles wide, 3,872.4 kilometers today. If the supervolcano were to erupt tomorrow, it would be devastating for our entire planet. Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming would be impacted by pyroclastic flows, which contain hot lava blocks, pumice, ash, and volcanic gas. Temperatures of the gases and rocks from these pyroclastic flows could range from 734 to 2,372 degrees Fahrenheit, 390 to 1,300 degrees Celsius, Nearly everything in its path would be destroyed. States could be buried beneath several feet of ash, and people could suffocate as a result. Plus, it would block sunlight and trigger an environmental disaster. Buildings would be destroyed, lives would be lost, animals would perish, and the ash and lava would do long-term damage. And recovery from this event would take generations upon generations. The issue of falling ash is perhaps the most terrifying part of this supervolcano blast. It would cover areas from North Dakota down to Southern California, and from there it would go across the southwest toward Louisiana. States like Arkansas, Missouri, and Iowa would be on the eastern edge of the ash bed. It's estimated that the volcano would do some $3 trillion worth of economic damage. Interstates would be crippled water used for drinking and farming would be damaged, and a staggering number of wildlife would be obliterated. The presence of a supervolcano is definitely nightmare fuel, but there's no reason to fear an eruption. Since the last eruption was over 640,000 years ago, scientists aren't convinced that another apocalyptic eruption will happen anytime soon. Jacob Lowenstein, a member of the U.S. Geological Survey, told Vox in 2014, even if Yellowstone did erupt again, you probably wouldn't get that worst-case scenario. Lowenstein stated that small eruptions would be more common. Also, there are around 10 to 20 volcanic eruptions per day on Earth, and we seem to do just fine. Yes, there's a reservoir of hot magma under the supervolcano in Yellowstone. And hundreds of miles below that is a plume of molten rock that's welling up. The geysers and hot springs that are famous at Yellowstone are fed by the heat from below. The amount of molten rock underneath Yellowstone is enough to fill the Grand Canyon nearly a dozen times. It should also be noted that the supervolcano threat is greater than a comet or asteroid threat to our planet. Additionally, scientists believe that we may not see an eruption over the next few hundred years. There is, however, a greater chance something will happen thousands or millions of years from now. Have you ever been to Yellowstone? If so, how did you like it? Let us know in the comments down below. And be sure to like and subscribe to this channel if you're new here. Supervolcanoes. The Yellowstone supervolcano isn't the only one on our planet. There are at least 20 supervolcanoes on Earth. And while they're considered an unnerving presence, 
supervolcanoes are misunderstood, and the threats they pose can be exaggerated. Geologists that have researched our planet's history have discovered evidence for at least 47 supervolcano eruptions. And some were far worse or equal to what Yellowstone is capable of doing. Massive super eruptions are rare, while normal eruptions are to be expected. These super eruptions have been absolutely epic. One massive eruption happened in New Zealand some 26,000 years ago. The Oruwanui eruption sent up 1,000 times more ash than Mount St. Helens in 1980. And that eruption also formed Lake Taupo. But perhaps the worst known to scientists was the Mount Toba eruption in Indonesia some 71,000 years ago. Around 670 cubic miles, 2,793 cubic kilometers of ash and lava were expelled. The eruption was caused by shifting tectonic plates, and the end result was a horrible global winter that lasted for decades. It created an ice age that nearly caused the complete extinction of humanity. Worldwide air temperatures had dropped some 6 to 9 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 14 to negative 12 degrees Celsius, and some data even suggests that it dropped nearly 18 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 7 degrees Celsius in certain regions. Russia talks nukes. The supervolcano in Yellowstone has been linked to Russian plans for strengthening their nuclear arsenal. Konstantin Sivkov, a retired naval officer, made comments on Russian television about a special weapon. These comments were made after Russian President Vladimir Putin stated new intercontinental ballistic missiles would be deployed in 2023. Sivkov wants the Russians to test launch a missile known as RS-28 Sarmat, nicknamed Satan-2 by NATO. This weapon has the capability of traveling some 16,000 miles per hour, 25,749.5 kilometers per hour. It can carry a dozen nuclear warheads and would be able to destroy entire cities. It's an impressive weapon capable of great damage. The missile is reported to have a range of some 6,800 miles, 10,943.5 kilometers, and it's already had successful tests in the past. Sivkov stated that Russia should consider some unconventional plans for using their nuclear arsenal, and one target he had in mind was the supervolcano in Yellowstone. However, this isn't the first time Sivkov has made the argument for deploying nuclear weapons to Yellowstone. He made a similar statement in a Russian newspaper back in 2015. He wanted to fire global nuclear missiles at Yellowstone to trigger an earthquake, which would set off the supervolcano. In his opinion, it would be an incredible chain reaction of events that would obliterate the United States. Another idea of his was to aim the missiles at the San Andreas Fault to cause a massive earthquake on the American West Coast. Sivkov told the press, a detonation of a nuclear weapon there can trigger catastrophic events like a coast-scale tsunami, which can completely destroy the infrastructure of the United States. Sivkov's suggestions are fueled by the paranoia that the US and its allies are building a nuclear arsenal to eliminate Russia. Sivkov was also fearful that the US and NATO would reduce the size of Russia's borders. He also boasted that Russia wasn't in danger of a volcanic eruption or tsunamis caused by nuclear blasts. Additionally, Sivkov stated that Siberia and parts of Russia in Eastern Europe would provide a safe haven of sorts against a nuclear fallout. But his claims are nothing more than hawkish propaganda for the Russian people. The United States and Russia have had an interesting relationship. The two were sworn enemies during the Cold War from 1947 until 1991. This is when Russia was part of the Soviet Union, and diplomacy between the two powerhouse countries was downright icy at times. Both built huge stockpiles of nuclear weapons. And by 1980, the United States had a nuclear arsenal of 23,000, while the Soviet Union had an arsenal of 39,000. When the Soviet Union collapsed and Russia gained independence in 1990, it appeared that the two nations would be on better terms. But that relationship soured under the presidencies of Vladimir Putin. Serving from 1999 to 2008, 
and again in 2012 to the present, Putin has been a thorn in the side of Western democracies. He's also ruled with an iron fist against those who've criticized him. Claims of Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election and the invasion of Ukraine are all part of Putin's complicated legacy as Russian president. A March 2023 Gallup poll showed that only 9% of Americans had a favorable view of Russia. As a comparison, the favorable number was 60% in 1990. Also, the war in Ukraine has created a great deal of anxiety across the globe. Russia has threatened the possible use of a nuclear weapon if a Ukrainian counteroffensive succeeds. And a recent CNN article stated, Russia has about 4,477 deployed and reserve nuclear warheads, including around 1,900 tactical nuclear weapons, according to the Federation of American Scientists. But luckily, scientists don't think Sivkov's plan to nuke Yellowstone in order to cause a supervolcano to erupt will work. Extremely strong earthquakes can release the energy of a 2,000 megaton nuclear explosion. But the strongest nuclear explosion in history was only a 50 megaton explosion in 1961 by the Soviet Union. Also, if a nuke were dropped near Yellowstone, the energy would be released into the air, not the ground. Scientists have also noted that there was an earthquake that registered a 7.2 on the Richter scale near the Hebgen Lake Fault in 1959, which is near the western boundary of Yellowstone. And that earthquake released 100 times more energy than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Also, the earthquake happened near the magma of the supervolcano, and still, it didn't erupt. Hebgen Lake wasn't the only major earthquake in the area of the supervolcano. A 1975 quake hit 6.1 on the Richter scale. It was at the Norris Geyser Basin, which is also in Yellowstone. Scientists are certain that there have been at least three major earthquakes in the area over the past 15,000 years. And if the area could withstand these earthquakes, then a nuclear blast poses a minimal threat. Yellowstone experiences some 1,500 to 2,500 minor earthquakes per year. And the supervolcano has yet to blow its top. The same theory is true for aiming missiles at the San Andreas Fault. That area has experienced numerous earthquakes far worse than a nuclear explosion. It's interesting that Sivkov's plans for these nuclear strikes are absurd, since he has the title of Doctor of Military Sciences. Stories like this are just tabloid fuel and clickbait. Yes, the thought of a supervolcano erupting is absolutely terrifying, but there's no fear at this time in regard to the Yellowstone supervolcano. Countries like Russia like to make bold statements concerning their weapons. The opinions of Konstantin Sivkov are of one man, and his plans to nuke Yellowstone and the San Andreas Fault are nothing more than a Hollywood fantasy. What are your thoughts about the supervolcano in Yellowstone? Do you think we're safe, or are we totally doomed? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.